What's going on my PT peeps and my Walking Dead family? Welcome to the PT channel. I'm One Eye Bright, also known as PT, and I'm back to talk about Fear the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 3, and my review of the episode. So obviously, spoiler warning for Season 5 as a whole, but definitely Season 5, Episode 3 of Fear the Walking Dead. If you're worried about spoilers, please stop watching now, as I don't want to ruin anything for you. But first and foremost, I thought the episode was pretty good. It was very overdramatic in a lot of parts, but the Whitey Boy, Morgan, John, June, everyone's okay. They started off everyone going down various roads and they found a perimeter basically that is being blocked by a bunch of different walkers that are roadblocks. But Luciana and Alicia found the board with the nails in it or boards with nails in it. And why didn't you throw that out of the road? And I mean, we left it in the road. Morgan drove down the same road and he was okay. So either way, it was all right. But the walkers in the road, the blockade of walkers is pretty cool and it takes me back the season six of The Walking Dead, so I thought it was Dwighty Boy. But it turns out to be Annie, Dylan, and Max for some reason. But they're chopping up the walker guts and they're killing the walkers, and then boom, they shoot the walker in the head, and I'm not sure who it actually was. And I'm guessing it was Dwight, and he went after them, and he's been around that area because he couldn't get past it too, so he was kind of stuck behind the blockades. But it was kind of like, is it Dwight or not? But either way, John and June went through the walker barricade into the town, and they were surrounded there by walkers and more walkers and a dust storm. It was crazy that there was a dust storm in the western town, but nowhere else. And I guess it was that scattered with the weather pattern, but it was pretty cool to see Dwight and John and June. And it's kind of like everyone is kind of scattered a little bit here. As you had John and June, Alicia, Morgan and Luciana, Strand, Charlie, Wendell, and Sarah that we'll probably see next week. But the Whitey Boy is part of Fear the Walking Dead, and he's kind of like the same old the Whitey Boy that we've known, still looking for Sherry, still not really trusting people, and it was kind of like good old Dwight if you like the guy. And he's kind of like the down in the dumps kind of guy, like, just leave me be. And he's depressed and he's had a tough life, that's for sure. I mean, just look at him. So hopefully we'll get a little more of the backstory, how he got there. And he's been there for about over a year and he still hasn't found Sherry. And he went down to Atlanta and went across that way. So he went from Virginia back down to Atlanta all the way over to Texas, and it's a dead end. Not sure what is happening here, but was the honeymoon to Georgia, and then he just kept going to Texas because that's what the notes were being left by Sherry, the breadcrumbs. And where is she? We don't know, but that's kind of an interesting tale, right? And there better be some way that we find her towards the end of the season. I think it's going to be the very end of the season that we're going to see Sherry. I've said that before, and to me it makes the most sense is that's how they end it with, hey, Dwight, See you next season. But the Western Town shootout was pretty cool, pretty cheesy, pretty over the top, pretty dramatic, pretty over dramatic. It was pretty cool where John's got the and they're shooting like gunpowder and muskets and trick shots and this and the, the San Antonio split or whatever they called it. And it's so crazy when Dwight kills the walker with the axe, falls down, the walker falls on top of him, and then John's like, hold the axe up. And then bing, and the bullet splits perfectly and kills the two walkers. It's like you could just run around the walkers a little bit too. You don't have to kill every single walker there. You could just kill one and keep walking and then zigzag and run around. I mean, the walkers are not agile things and nobody was running anywhere. It was like walk here, walk there. Oh, I got the car is right there. The cars were right there. But John and June, I love them together. It's a nice part of the show for sure. But it always seems to work out for John and June. They're like, yep, we're doing good. Yep, we're doing good. Oh man, we think we're down, but we're still doing good. Oh, a little twist and a little turn and we're still doing good. But I think it's gonna take a major twist and then we're gonna lose one of them. And that could be the end of the season too. Could be Sherry's group that comes around and that will cause a major conflict because I think Sherry's gonna be with the group. She's really making it where she is by herself. This doesn't really make sense and why she had to keep moving and missing Dwighty Boy. As for Morgan, and Dwight, it's not this big epic, you know, connection. It's like, oh, they kind of know each other, but they don't, right? They do, but they don't. These are probably the first scenes that they ever been in together. And it's interesting because Dwight's like, hey, I, I didn't really get to tell you about what happened back there. And Morgan's like, no, we only got a couple seconds left in this episode. Let's save it for another time. No, he didn't say that, but it's basically what happened because it was at the very end of the episode. And they're like, let's not talk about here possibly in another episode. And I hope they really do. Hope they talk about the war and what happened and Negan and this and the saviors and what happened and why Dwighty Boy left that Daryl told him to leave. And these two were like, who's Daryl? Who's Negan? Who's this? 
who's that? Or who's Negan, right? But they're like, you know each other? And they're like, yeah, I guess we kind of do, but we don't. So it's interesting, right? Is it forced? Is it gonna make sense? I hope so. I personally hope that Sherry's group is actually the villainous group that this show needs. That'd be pretty awesome. And if you know the comics, you know that Sherry is part of the Saviors at some point in the storyline, and it's pretty big in the comic. I would love for that story arc to come to the show here on Fear the Walking Dead. But that remains to be seen, as I'm not a writer for the show, and I don't know what they're gonna do and what the plan is. Hope they have a plan to build for the future and connect with the Rick Grimes movies or what, but I still think that the best thing for this show to do is to connect with the Rick Grimes movies, and I would love to see that happen. But it's those little brats that are setting up all these walkers. No, they're kids. There's, you know, Annie, Max, and Dylan, and they're lying to Alicia and lying to Morgan, and Morgan's like, talk to him, Alicia. Just talk to him. And Alicia's like, I lost my mother, and I lost this. These kids don't care about you and Madison and your mother. It's just like, oh, let's have a sentimental moment in the zombie apocalypse. That's what the show loves to do. But Max, Dylan, and Annie don't want anything to do with them. They lied to him on purpose, and we'll see if it comes back around because Annie and Max want nothing to do with Alicia and the group. But they found the van at the very end, and it's interesting because what's up with Dylan? What's up with the story going forward? Dylan is not gonna crack, but he's gonna crack, right? I mean, he is a Dotson. He's connected to Major Dotson, who was on The Walking Dead. He was Sam, but Cooper, right here, who plays Dylan, is a character that hopefully brings these kids to the group and they help out and they all work out. But what if these kids are connected to Logan or another villainous group? I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but that would be a major twist. If their parents were still alive, I just, that would be pretty cool. Well, let's talk about these two. They are the two Walking Dead crossover characters so far. Will we get more? Who knows? But will these two carry Fear the Walking Dead for another season or two or connect it to the Rick Grimes movies. We don't know, but I do like the idea of Dwight's story and Sherry, because if Sherry is a connecting point, that's another crossover character too. So we could have Sherry, Dwighty boy, and Morgan, and we'll see who else is around. But it's interesting. Will we see a backstory of Dwight getting there? He looks pretty good here in the promo photos. So is this him getting around walking from Virginia to Georgia and from Georgia to Texas? What happened to the blue truck he had at the end of season eight? And he's been in Texas or traveling around for over a year. I would love for them to show Georgia again. 85, Atlanta, downtown. That would be pretty awesome. I would love to see what it looks like. Even if it was for a brief second and he was driving through and kept driving and then his truck broke down or something. It'd be pretty awesome and I would love to see that. Probably won't happen then because it would be pretty great. And for some reason, they don't give us big moments and epic moments. But it's so crazy if you think about it, right? Texas is gigantic. And so is the United States. To go from Virginia to Georgia, from Georgia to Texas, is pretty crazy that you would meet this group of people in a small little town of Humbug Gulch or around that area. And I know it's a fictional show in science fiction, a zombie apocalypse, but it's just so crazy if you think about it. Like, you could be on a major highway, and you could have went right, and they could have went left, and you never would have found each other, right? But the biggest thing is Dwight going after Sherry still. And that's his main drive. And that's cool. That's where we met him the first time. It was him and Sherry and that other girl, and the other girl died, and then Daryl, and they took his bike, and it was just this whole big thing, introduction season six. And then... He's still looking for Sherry, still trying to find her. But what's up with the heads? Who's doing this? If the kids are doing the uh, barricade of walkers in the road, who's doing this? Is it the CRM people, which are the helicopter people? Is it Logan's people? Is it another group? Is it Sherry's people? Like I said, that would be a major twist if it was Sherry's people all along. We still didn't get anything from this. This is basically the way the episode ended. Well, it ended with Strand and Daniel and Strand taking out walkers with rocks, which is pretty funny. But who's doing this? And where's Althea? Hopefully we'll get answers next week, but we got a bunch more episodes for this season. And overall, it's entertaining for sure. It's much better and it's still overdramatic and it's too much sometimes. And it's just like, if you start thinking about it logically, it's like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know what's gonna do. But again, 
a science fiction show. But overall, I wonder what's going to happen with Dwight and Morgan and everything going forward. So let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. And overall, I enjoyed the episode and I thought it was entertaining. And I'm excited to see what happens the rest of the season. Please hit that subscribe button and become a valued member of our PT channel, Walking Dead Family. And remember, with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself. You can do it. It's about love, support, staying positive, making memories. And as always, tell them, Daryl. Yo, we love you guys. Honestly, thank you.